improved to 3 0 with a 24 12 win over the Lions. Peyton Manning threw for 324 yards and two TDs. It was his 164th career game with multiple touchdown passes. No surprise, that's an NFL record. Two wins were against playoff teams from last year. Both the Ravens and the Lions were in the playoff skip. Did this game end the questions about Peyton Manning? There's been so much speculation Perhaps. about him this season. Stephen A., silly me, I thought those questions got laid to rest back at Kansas City when Peyton, in the last two minutes, 27 seconds, led that team 80 yards and 10 plays, including the 19-yarder to Emmanuel Sanders that won the football game against their arch rival in one of the loudest outdoor venues in the world. And yet, it seemed like NBC's storyline all last night was, is, could this be the end? Could this be the end of Peyton? Obviously, Chris Collinsworth said, ah, that's a bunch of baloney. Mm -hmm. Well, it sure looked like a bunch of baloney to me last night because clearly Peyton won the power struggle with Gary Kubiak, so they went all shotgun last night. Now they're back to the, the running game that carried that team. Remember down the stretch last year when Peyton clearly was hurt, starting with that St. Louis game that you've talked about so many times, yep. then the San Diego game yep. at San Diego. That they just ran the heck out of the ball down the stretch and it mm -hmm. carried Peyton through his obvious right. injuries. Well, now the running game's pretty much disappeared. Now it's all Peyton. Mm -hmm. 31 out of 42 for 324. I realize it's the Lions, but they just banked another big road win to me. And as Peyton pointed out, it's not the same Lions as last year, but they were in the playoffs. They did lose to my Dallas Cowboys at Jerry World. Mm -hmm. And the, po the point is, They've beaten Baltimore, even though Baltimore might not be Baltimore. They were a playoff team last year in Kansas City. So they're off to a pretty great start. And Peyton's, look, he looks as effective to me as he has ever looked. I, I never worried about his arm strength because he never had much to begin with. I don't know what the problem is. He still looks like Peyton Manning to me at age 39. Skip Bayless, I agree with you, but I totally understand why there are question marks about the Denver Broncos. Over the last three years under Peyton Manning, they were been, they've been in the top three in terms of points scored. Last year, they were the number two ranked offense in all of football, mm -hmm. you know, scoring, for, putting up 482 points. This year, over the first three games of all the teams right now that are three and oh, they've got the second least amount mm -hmm. of points at 74 to the Carolina Panthers. That's number one. Uh, but also, Denver somewhat reminds me of Baltimore. Certainly Flacco is no comparison to Peyton Manning in yep. my opinion, even though they both have the same amount of Super Bowl victories. They do. But the flip side to it is that just like Justin Forsett has lost his game mm -hmm. and can't seem to run the football mm -hmm. for the Baltimore Ravens, CJ Anderson ain't doing it. Maybe for the Denver Broncos. Is that him, him or the line? Him, well, it could be the line. It could be the line. But at the end of the day, we have to look We have to look at what you have. Now, the line obviously was formidable. They've changed bodies like three or four they different have. dudes and on the offensive line. Positions. You're absolutely right. So you got to take that. And I appreciate that. Thank you. So you got that going on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, even when there were some question marks due to injuries in the past, with the offensive line last year, we looked at a C.J. Anderson. The year before that, it was, you know, it was a uh, Monty Ball, and yep. I, I forgot that another name escapes me. I'm just, I got, I got brain lock right here right now. But Gilman, or, it, uh, yeah. no, 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 Sean, yeah, uh, no, yeah, Sean Moreno. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So you've got that going on. So you had all of that, and they were running the ball relatively effectively. Yeah. That's not happening right yeah. now, okay? But I will say that that's the problem, and I think that's the question mark of why people are looking at Peyton Manning. But mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think it's much ado about nothing because he can still do it. The biggest. Pro, the, the, what I took from last night's game, the Detroit Lions, I, it was a competitive game, 14 to 12 at one point, and I still wasn't interested, and I couldn't figure it out why, and then bam, it hit me. And Dominican Sue being gone from that defense, that mystique is gone. They ranked 25th defensively, 27th against the pass, 20th against the rush. Nothing nasty at all about their nope. defense. That's a problem. That in combination. There is just, Megatron is no longer He's Megatron. Not He's not that guy. We've been talking about Des Bryant, Antonio Brown, Demarius Thomas, Julio Jones. We used to put Charles Johnson, Megatron, in that category. Sure. He was number one. Well, he was the guy. And I'm yeah. saying, I and I'm, in, watching I'm in no way saying that he's finished. Mm -hmm. I am saying that the first three games of this yeah. season has told us that he is out of that category. You know, I've, I've come to the belief that Megatron made Matt Stafford. And I never, I, I didn't used to think that, but Matt Stafford could just fling it up in the air. He looks ordinary now. Yeah, he that, looks ordinary yeah. now. All right, moving on, you guys. You mentioned Miami. 
Buffalo crushing their AFC rival Miami on their home turf. Up next, we're going to discuss that. That seat is getting hot down there in Miami for Joe Philbin. Will they be calling for his job? We'll tell you if it's on the line. That's coming up next on First Take. Dolphins lost their most lopsided home opener in team history, losing 41 to 14 to the Bills. This coming on the heels of a 23-20 loss to the Jaguars. That was in week two. Here is head coach Joe Philbin after the loss. It's the third game of the season. I mean, I wish we were playing better, uh, but uh, we are what we are right now. We're going to take a look at the tape and, uh, you know, look into what everything we're doing and make decisions that can uh, help us become better quicker. I mean, this, there's no magic potion. If I had a magic potion, I would have brought it out earlier. Um, you know, going into the game, you know, we, would, uh, we were fifth in the NFL in scoring defense. Obviously, we're not going to be that coming out of the game. And uh, we didn't play very well on defense today whatsoever. And we have to do better. Stephen A., is it time for Philbin to go? Yes, it is. Um, it's not something that I like to say. Um, I'm sure that the man is knowledgeable about the game of football. It's not, I'm certainly not qualified to debate X's and O's and to dissect him to the degree that, you know, I'm qualified to sit there and say he's incompetent. I certainly would not, I'm not accusing Joe Philbin of that. What I'm saying is that he's not inspirational. He doesn't inspire. Um, this team has never been eight and eight under his stewardship. This is his fourth season. He was seven to nine the first year, eight and eight the second year, eight and eight the third year, and now here they are. They have looked bad all three games, including their opening victory of the season against the Redskins. I just look at him. They're uninspiring at all. Now, everybody's been pointing the finger at Adamic and Sue. I see effort. I see him trying to, I'm seeing them get double teamed. I'm seeing them get triple teamed. I thought Cameron Wake would do a better job playing alongside him on the line. That isn't taking place. And they absolutely positively can't defend against the run because they're ranked 30th in rushing. And, and you know, Tyrod Taylor and those boys did their thing. But Philbin got out coached yesterday. Rex Ryan, and they just confused him. They ran the ball when he thought they would pass. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, when he thought they would pass, they passed the ball when he thought they would run. And Philbin just seems to be anemic, just totally lifeless when it comes to really inspiring these guys to play some daggone football. And that's a very, very big thing in the sport of football. Mm -hmm. It can't just be about X's and O's. You watch Bill Belichick. He seems to speak these guys' language or get them to speak his. Yep, I agree. Philbin doesn't do that. They need, there are some people who are meant to be coordinators. Mm. That is Joe, Joe Philbin. He needs to go. They need a new head coach, and they don't need to wait until the end of this season. Stephen Ross, who had Warren mm -hmm. Buffett in attendance with him when they were down 27 to nothing in the first half and let the Buffalo Bills pile up 200 yards in the first quarter, he needs to get a new coach quick, fast, and in a hurry. I agree with you. They were also fortunate to virtually steal game one the week one at Washington right. with a fourth quarter punt return. Remember that? That's 17 right. to 10. I, I, I'm going to go to the quarterback too because I do blame Philbin somewhat for hitching his star in that franchise to Ryan Tannehill. And I've told you since before the draft, I don't love him. I'm not sure he's going to lead you to any promised lands anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, his QBR scale, 0 to 100, was 12. Mm -hmm. Tyrod Taylor's was 95. Yes. Now, they ran into a Buffalo buzzsaw that is yeah. going to buzz through a lot of people this mm -hmm. year, yep. except for the New England Patriots. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they gave up that defense, anchored by Sue, gave up 428 yards and 41 points. But meanwhile, Tannehill doesn't help you because he throws three interceptions. So first half, yeah, and you're you're going to lose. You're just you're going to lose. You're going to get blown out at home if you're going to throw three first half interceptions in your home opener. That the handwriting's all over the stadium wall. That it's time for Philbin to go. But I thought it was before this year even started. You did, and and and, and the bottom line is this. South Beach and the folks down there in Miami don't want him there. Hmm. Let's just call it what it is. You know, he that you know, you got to speak folks language. You've got to vibe. You've got to represent the franchise in a fashion that will galvanize dudes mm -hmm. to want to come and play for you. And Dominic and Sue is being double and triple team, Skip. I'm not saying he's flawless by any stretch. He only got three tackles on the mm -hmm. season. I mean, come on now. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that he needs some help. Yep. And he ain't getting it. Nope. No. Seven year playoff drought down there in Miami. You know who really loved this one? Charles Clay and 
and Richie Incognito, I'm sure. Extra sweet for them. Mm -hmm. Baseball became baseball for the Nats yesterday as Bryce Harper and Jonathan Papelbon got into it. Big deal, no deal. Wow. We'll discuss that next.